All right, today we're gonna try out the FSD 12.3.3 on the Tesla. We're gonna see how good it is. So this new version from the previous one, so right now it's at 12, but before the 12, before the version 12s, this one's actually using a full neural network. So what that means is they're not actually pre-programming things, making like decision trees. So everything is trained just based on vision. So let's take a look at our monitor here. So we're gonna go ahead and just navigate mostly local and we're gonna see how well it goes. But to start it, you just need to uh, press this stick here down and then it's gonna start navigating. It's going kind of fast on the street. Well, not too bad, it's 20, 24 miles per hour. You can see the nice blue lines it has and the lanes. You can see there's a car coming up right here. Let's see if it stops or slows down. Okay, it slows down pretty far away. Feel feel pretty comfortable. And okay, so it's it knows to kind of nice. That was a very smooth, very smooth. Okay, so it's apply slight turning force. So it's being very cautious. So far, so good. Yeah, so you can see the visuals right here has been updated from the previous version. So the previous one didn't show this much detail, but here you can see like all the yellow lines and when it's in FSD, there's like a full blue line here. But let's see how that makes this right turn here. Kind of saw the wheel right now, it's like shaking a little bit back and forth. It seemed like it was adjusting. So now you can see it's starting to like creep up checking if there's any cars. I'm just gonna have my foot here just in case. But you can see a car is coming on my left, a bus is coming, two more cars, another car coming, so it's waiting. It's trying to find a safe time to go. And yep, making a safe right turn. So far so good. And wow, right away it tries to find the fast lane without me doing anything. It still needs some intervention. You can see it told me to apply like a slight force. I think it's just trying to make sure that we're not asleep or anything. You can see a nice green lights here. So a lot of people are saying things like, oh, with uh, Nvidia, are they gonna take over Tesla? Because as you guys all know, Nvidia has, um, it's like a big holder of the GPUs that they have for training. Um, so there's different thoughts on it. Some people think right now it's agreeing and it's going. So far, so good. So NVIDIA, they think, some people think that, you know, since Tesla just started the new, okay, it's making it right here, going in front of the car. Okay, so far, so good. We're gonna make it right pretty soon. But yeah, so as, as I was saying, so NVIDIA, NVIDIA thinks, people think that NVIDIA might catch up to Tesla since Tesla technically just started the whole, you know, full neural network FSD. So, and it's possible if they could generate enough synthetic data. So a popular trend nowadays is people like to make fake data and train off of the fake data. But personally, I'm a little bit skeptical how that work because um, there's just so many edge cases that this car needs to handle so I feel like with that main point they might have a hard time to catch up with Tesla but Tesla right now has like six million vehicles out on the road or maybe not all not all out but they just produce their six their six millionth vehicle so they're really smart for making this FSD free for trial for like one month um, because there's no better way to collect data from users that's like real data than doing it like this. So I think once, once Tesla gets more and more data, they could probably start refining their models and push new updates. But this is really gonna help them, you know, boost their FSD performance over time. So very, very excited to see how that's gonna play out. 
So it's actually telling me to turn the steering wheel, wheel a lot more than I thought. So, but I guess that's a pretty safe feature. So right now there's been no like crazy things that it has to do, but you can see later on we're gonna be making a left into the plaza. So I'm very curious how it's gonna make like a unprotected left here. So let's see what happens in a few minutes. So far it's been pretty good. So a little bit more details about um, version 12, like I, I kind of mentioned earlier, but version 12, the biggest difference, like I said earlier, was now it's like a full neural network. So they use things like imitation learning. So previously they would kind of program out all the cases. So, you know, let's say if they're in like a, like a dead end, how would you handle that? Or like, you know, someone walking by, how do you handle that? Basically they would figure out all the edge cases. So. When we talk about edge cases, it usually means that they're like the cases that's out of the normal distribution. So pretty much things that's like that don't happen all the time or like rare occurrences. But these edge cases is really what separates, you know, making this whole FSD like fully, fully reliable and um, usable out in the wild. So with this new FSD, the 12 version 12 one, what they do is for their training, they actually don't have to program these cases, but all their input is just a bunch of video feeds like we have right here is their training data. So just based on the video, they'll typically have some different outputs. So really you can only do three things to a car, right? You could turn the wheel. So right now it's making a right here. It's preparing to turn on Gale here. So I, I like how it's planning a bit early, so that's good. But like I was saying, so this model that you have, you know, there's like billions of parameters that they have to adjust to find the right parameters. And the training data is just a bunch of videos and the output, there's really only three things you can do with a car. You can have a t wheel turn, so you have some angle for the wheel, and then you have your stop and go, right? So there's essentially three outputs that is the result of some video. So with enough data, this FSD can pretty much figure out the right combinations of these three knobs, so to say, to kind of make it go where you want it to go. And of course, there's like the data, you know, with the GPS navigating and the maps. So that's like an additional layer of data that they have. So I'd imagine they could probably feed in like two things, maybe like a map video of a map or just a map, static map or um, some other things, depending on how they want to process it. So right now it's making a right on Gale here. Turn right onto Gale Avenue. So let's see which lane it goes on, because it's going to make a left soon. So I'm curious when it's going to turn on the left here. It's telling me to apply some force now. So it's coming up. I think it might be making a left pretty soon. Let's see what happens. Maybe after this street it might start turning over. Yeah, so, so far so good. I haven't had to stop it for any reasons. Uh, maybe because there's just not too many cars right now since it's a rainy day. Okay, so now it's making the left. Did it about like one street right before and it has to, so. Okay, and it's telling me to apply some force again. Again, just to make sure I'm awake. In 500 feet, turn left. Alright, it's gonna go in the median here. Now turn left. There's no incoming cars, so unfortunately we can't see any difficult cases as a handle, but let's see how it does inside the parking lot. Let's see a car coming here. Now your destination is on the right. And it says press accelerometer to resume. So yeah, that's it for today.